So lots of traders like the idea of trading options, buying cheap calls on stocks they're bullish on and cheap puts on stocks they're bearish on, trying to make cheap, quick profits. But for lots of reasons, these trades often turn out badly because to buy an option cheaply means that it's got to be pretty far from the current price of the market. So the market has to move pretty far for that option to expire with any value at all. Well, that can be a frustrating experience for traders. In fact, traders don't really realize this, but 75% of all options expire worthless because the market never gets down to the level of their put or up to the level of their call. In fact, the market can go exactly the direction the trader predicted and they still lose money on their trade and that's because the market ran out of time to give their option value. If the option had expired a few days later, they might have made money. Instead, the trader has to sit and watch the market do exactly what he thought it would do, yet he lost his entire investment in that option because it expired too soon. Well, what if there was a way to turn this whole situation on its head and instead put together a combination of options that guarantees a profit if the market rallies and at the same time is designed such that if the market sells off in a reasonable fashion, a possibility for a really spectacular return exists? Well, the good news is that there actually is a 10-day trade that does just that and it really is not that difficult to learn or understand. So if you're interested in a weekly option strategy that's guaranteed to win if the market rallies, wins if the market sells off mildly, and has the potential for spectacular gain if the market gradually sells off during the course of the trade, then I'm sure you're going to be interested in this video, so stick around. Hi, I'm Seth Freuberg and I'm the head trader of SMB Capital's options trading desk here in Manhattan. SMB Capital is a proprietary trading firm located in Midtown Manhattan and we provide capital for options and equity traders from all over the world trading both remotely and in our offices here in New York City. You'll want to click our subscribe button right now so that you don't miss any of our free trading videos produced for the trading and investment community. Now, in this video, we're going to be reviewing a weekly option strategy using a formation known as the broken wing butterfly. And we're going to be setting it up so that it is guaranteed to win if the market stays still or rallies over the 10-day life of the trade. That's the easy part, which is quite rewarding on its own. But what I think you're going to find particularly interesting is what can happen to the trade if the market actually sells off gradually during the course of the trade. That's where the lottery ticket sized returns can happen, but you've got to set the trade up right in the first place to give you this combination of potential outcomes. I'll be showing you just how to do that exactly in a few moments. While we're talking about option strategies, if you'd like to learn three more real world option strategies that our traders use, including the surprisingly simple and powerful strategy that some of the greatest investors in the world like Warren Buffett use all the time, plus, an options trading strategy that has a statistical 80% probability of profit month in and month out, plus an option strategy that you can employ with a stock that you like where you'll make your target profit, whether the stock goes up, goes nowhere, or even goes down a small percentage, then you should check out the free options class that we're currently running. Just go ahead and click the link that should be appearing right now at the top right corner of your screen. That will open the free registration page in a new window, so don't worry, you won't lose this video. You can also visit optionsclass.com to register for this free intensive workshop. Now, it's an extremely rare opportunity for retail traders and investors to learn directly from Wall Street traders, but that's exactly what you'll be getting through this free online workshop. So click the link to sign up now and don't miss it. All right, guys, so um, we're going to be talking about an option strategy t today called the broken wing butterfly. And uh, I want to kind of break some things down for you first so that you understand how the broken wing butterfly works. Everybody in the room knows what a call option is and a put option. Just to review, if you buy uh, a call option, it gives you the right to own 100 shares of a stock at a certain price called the strike price um, as long as you exercise that option at or before the expiration date of that option. A put option, on the other hand, gives you the right to sell shares you own at a certain price at or before 
that option expires. So for example, if um, uh, Google is trading at 1200 and you own the Google 1250 call and Google goes to 1350 on uh, expiration day, then you can go ahead and cash in anytime actually before expiration day, you can go ahead and cash those uh, um, options in and buy Google at 1250 even though it's trading for 1350 and therefore make $100 per share and you would be uh, cashing that in for 100 shares. So that's the way a call option work, a put option, you know, would be just the opposite as to selling them. Now, what a lot of people don't realize is that there's such a thing as index options. Now, can you buy an index? Can you buy the Dow Jones Industrial Average? No. You can't buy it, right? No. You can't buy one share of it. You can't buy a thousand shares of it. You can't buy an index because an index is basically a basket of stocks, right? But what you can do in the options market is buy a contract which pays you if the index, in the case of calls, exceeds a certain strike price or in the case of puts, drops below that strike price. And what you're paid is $100 per point. So if you own one S&P 500 option, which are known as the SPX options, if you own, let's say the SPX is trading at uh, 3,000, and suppose that you own the 3100 SPX put that expires in, on September 1st, okay? And suppose the SPX goes to 3200, or let's make it a little mathematically easier. 3150 by, um, by September 1st. What would that option be worth on September 1st? It's a 3100 strike yet the um, S&P is trading at 3150. How much cash would you get for owning that call? Anybody? 5,000. That's correct, 5,000. You would, you would multiply the 50 points between the strike price and where the market's trading times the 100, times 100 for every point. So 50 times 100 is 5,000. That's how a call works. Now let's do the same example with the S&P trading at, um, trading at uh, 2,900, okay? So in that example, um, you own the, th the uh, I'm sorry, let's take an example of your owning the 2,900 put and the S&P drops to 2,800, okay? What would that be worth on expiration day? $10,000. $10,000, that's right, okay. Now suppose it drops to 2,901, What's it worth on expiration day? Zero. Zero. Very important. It, worth zero. How about 2,900? Zero. You're not going to, it, it didn't get below 2,900, you don't get anything. Suppose it rallies to 3,500. What's it worth? Zero. Zero. Okay. You just passed the test. So that is the way index options work. They are a cash. It's very, very similar to an insurance policy. It's insuring you a call, insuring you against the market going up. A put is insuring you against the market going down. Now, so what are we going to do with this information? And what we're going to do with this information is put together an option strategy called a broken wing butterfly. Now, one thing I haven't reviewed so far is the fact that um, in the options market, you are allowed to combine short and long options together in what are called option strategies, option structures is another term for it, and you do this through submitting a complex order, what's called a complex order, meaning you're not buying 10 of a particular option, you're buying 10 of a group of options. And in many, many cases, they are a group of short and long options combined. So what you see up on the screen right here is a broken wing butterfly. And this is 10 days from expiration on this particular uh, date. Now, the, uh, this is an index. I'm not really going to identify the index because I want you to understand the principles and not focus on when this occurred or anything else. This will be true in the past, present, and the future. Now, 
So this particular index is trading at 1724. You will see that what we're doing is we're buying 10 of the 1700 puts. We're selling 20 of the 1690s and we're buying 10 of the 1670s. All right, we're doing that all at once. And I can show you, if you were, anybody interested later, I can show you how to actually put in a complex order into the broker we use here in our, in our um, uh, prop firm. And it's easily done and it's easily filled because they have uh, at the CBOE what they call a complex order book which is all the places where all the bids and asks for complex orders are put in, all right? So they'll see this order coming in and somebody's gonna fill it. Now, so let's break down, why the heck did I do this? Why the heck did I go in and buy 10 of the 1700s, sell 20 of the 1690s, and buy 10 of the uh, 1670s at the same time? Why did I do that? And the reason I did that was because it creates a scenar various scenarios that I find favorable. Now, what are those scenarios? Well, the first thing you need to know is, um, let's take a look at that, um, that top put, that, six, that 1700 put, right? That's gonna cost, uh, if you saw the prices on that previous options chain, that's gonna cost us $5.55 times 100 for each option. So that's actually, $555, but we're buying 10 of them. So the math is 10 options times 100, because every individual option you multiply the price by 100 times the, the quoted price. So it's 555 times 10 times 100. So we had to pay, to buy those 10, we had to, actually had to pay $5,550. Now, but we then went down and sold 20 of those 1690s. We sold 20 of those. Well, those were trading for 380, so it was 380 times 100 times 20, and that comes out to $7,600. Then we went down and bought the long 1670 puts, basically for protection, and those we purchased for uh, $1.90 times 10 times 100. So that comes out to, uh, if you add all of it up, you actually received cash for their transaction because the 20 shorts, the value of those were a little bit greater than the, um, that w they turned out to be a little bit greater than the uh, purchases of the, of the 1700 and the 1670 puts. So we got in 150 bucks into our account. You will see your account go up by $150 as soon as this transaction occurs. It, not that your account will go up your cash in your account will go up, okay? And the broker, for reasons that are too complicated to explain right today, is going to um, require you to have $9,850 in your account in order to do this transaction. By the way, you could do this as a one lot, buy one, sell two, buy one, and the whole every number just divide by 10, so you'd need $985. So you don't necessarily have to have $10,000 in your account to do this. What is the deal. And what the deal is, is that I want you to think through what's going to happen if this index goes up. Let's say it goes up to 1750 by expiration day. Did I make money on the transaction? Did I lose money? Did I break even? What happens? Who knows? What about three strikes again? 1700. 1690, 1670, okay? I got in $150 in cash. 10 days goes by, the index has rallied to 1750. What has happened to my P&L? What's my P&L? The options have expired, trade's over, somebody calculate my P&L. Plus 30. Why would you say plus 30? The long puts are worthless. The shorts, we're at 1690, it's at 1750 now. Right. Times two would be 120. Oh, but times 100. So that'd be minus 12. Here's a bit better way to do it. I want you to give me the value of each of the options on expiration day if that's at 1750. What's the value of the 1700? Zero. 
What's the value of the 1690? The strike, the strike, just that option. Does it have any value? No. It is the strike. Somebody who owns it, mm -hmm. just think about owning it. Even though you've sold it, imagine if you own it. What are you going to get for that 1690 put? Anybody? 6,000. Zero. 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 Think about it. It's trading 1750. Here's an option that yeah. only pays off if it's dropped to 1690. Okay? How about this 1670? What's that worth? Zero. Zero. So it's a whole bucket of nothing, right? All options expire worthless. We just proved that, right? Yeah. So what was your P&L on the trade? $150. $150. Got 150 bucks, and what you did was you basically put together a transaction that had no value to anybody 10 days later, but they gave you 150 bucks for it. That's what happened. That's the reality of what happened. Okay, just like you buy a car insurance policy and you don't get into an accident. Do they give you your money back? They give you your premium back? No, they keep it, right? I used to run an insurance company, so I know about this. And that's what happens. You, you keep it. So that you, you get to keep the 150. So here's what's interesting. Suppose the stock drops to 1700, or the index drops to 1700. Let's look at it. So now it dropped, okay? It dropped, but it dropped and stopped at 1700. What happens? Everything expires worthless again. Why? Even the 1700 is worthless because it didn't get below 1700. If it got the 1699, now it would have a little bit of value, but it didn't. So think about all the scenarios where you get to pocket the 150. The market rallies a lot. The market rallies a little. The market doesn't move. The market drops 24 points. You make your 150 in every one of those scenarios. Now here is what's interesting. If the market drops below the 1700 put, but doesn't make it to the 1690, Start thinking about what would happen, and I'm going to show you what would happen. This example that I gave you, which is a real example, the index closed at 1691.80. Now, is this fluky? Yes. Does it never happen? No, it doesn't never happen. It happens every once in a while. Okay? I want you to see what happens when that happens. So, in this actual historical example, the index dropped to 1691.80. All right? So now let's see what happens. <clears throat> it, the 1690 put, let's do the easy part. The 1690 put expires worthless, right? Because it's 1691.80. The 1670 put expires worthless, right? 1670. But what happens to that 1700 put? It's now in the money, what's called in the money by $8.20, meaning it now has value. And that value is calculated by the strike price minus the market price of the index when, it, when the options expired that day. So, so $1,700 minus $1,691.80 is $8.20. That's how much you get paid off, but not $8.20. You get $8.20 times 100 times the 10 options that we owned. So that is $8,200. So I want you to think about what happened. You got 150 bucks up front. Then you got $8,200 basically because of, exclusively because of the value of that 1,700 put. The other ones expired worthless and therefore you made $8,350 on this trade compared to the ninety-eight fifty dollars that you had to put up to do the trade in the first place because of the capital uh, that's required. So what's our takeaway from this lesson? Lots of takeaways, but 
One important takeaway is there's such a thing called index options, which pays you off in cash instead of pays you off in shares. Another important takeaway is you can combine options, short and long, into structures that allow you to make money in different scenarios. The specific structure we built, in this case the Broken Wing Butterfly, has a unique feature to it when it's used in this way, and that is you can set it up so that you get a credit for it. And the, the technical reasons we can get into another day, but you can just see from the flat out pricing that you ended up with a credit for it. And basically the reason you got the credit was you sold this 20 of those 1690 puts, right? And um, those have less value than the 1700s because the 1700s are even closer to the market. But nonetheless, you're selling twice as many. And then the one you bought at the bottom was not 10 points away, but 20 points away. Oftentimes, when you do that, you're going to end up with a credit because the ones you sold have a larger total value because you're selling twice as many than the cost of the other two. Doesn't always work out that way, but it frequently works out that way. So when you put this structure together, what it does is it creates this really interesting and unique opportunity, which is you make money in four of the five scenarios. Any trade, only five things can happen. Goes up a lot, goes up a little, doesn't move at all, goes down a little, go down, goes down a lot. That's it. Those are the only five scenarios, right? This one makes you money in four of those five. Then there's like a fifth scenario. There's 5A and there's 5B. 5B is the market goes down so far you start losing money on the transaction. And that would happen because the 1690s that you're short start getting worse and worse for you because uh, you now, you've sold 20 of those, you're short those, and the market's going down. So th that's going against those options. Um, but that's 5B. That's the bad one. 5A, 5A is the great one. That's where the, you don't trigger the short options at all. You simply make money on the topmost long option. And then uh, you cash in like you did uh, in this case. Incidentally, if the market went to 1688 and those short options started to hurt you a little bit, you would still make money on the transaction. If you do the math, you would still make money on the transaction. You just wouldn't make as much because you're giving back some of the money you, you made on that 1700 put by having to pay off the owner of the 1690 puts your 20 puts and you, you owe him money and you got to net that out and the net of those gives you your your example so your gives you your profit so yes why did we use um different distances on the strike price that's a great question and that's why it is called a broken wing butterfly as opposed to a regular butterfly in a just from the language what would you guess a regular butterfly is a normal yeah, they butterfly. Equal they're equal distance between the longs and the sh between the, the the middle short two times and the one times on either side of it are, are equidistant. Did we do it because it was a cheaper option, I just realized. Yeah, in other words, right. The one you 16, buy, 70. the 1670, is cheap enough that the whole transaction becomes a credit. Okay, let's go a little further. What if you bought the 1660? It'd be even more net positive. You'd even get, that's correct. You get a larger credit. Very good. And uh, suppose you put it closer and you made them equidistant. Uh, it probably wouldn't be a credit that you have less risk on the downside. Very good. Excellent. That's right. It, 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 all, it's never a credit. I can't think of a case where that would be a credit. Right. Um, it just works out that way. Yeah. So, so that's a broken wing butterfly. That's, a, that's actually not a beginner strategy. You just learn more like an intermediate level strategy. But because we broke it down for you, I think it was understandable and uh, hopefully you learned something today. Now, don't go out and do a 10 lot, please. I know what happens to the people, they get excited, this is cool, and they forget about the risk, and there's a reason your broker's um, you know, cap requiring 98.50 in capital, because that technically is the worst that can happen on this trade, and it can happen. Now you gotta protect against it, and you gotta have a stop on the trade like you have any other trade. 
but that's a possibility also. But in most cases, in the four out of the five scenarios, you're going to make your 150 bucks. So in 10 days, if you do the math on that, that's a little greater than one and a half percent over 10 days. Yeah, so if you do this every week, well, you could do it technically, I guess, 52 times a year, right? A 10 day trade. Um, you know, uh, you're going to have some losses in there and you have to have a stop on it. We could talk about that another day, what would be an appropriate stop on a trade like this. But uh, all you need is one of these 80% returners and uh, it's going to be very helpful for your return that year. So any questions? Um, we're making money in four out of five, four out of five, plus, you know, one divided by two, like five A, five B scenarios. Yeah. Um, but is there um, a scenario where you're not like selling these options or exiting these options all at the same time? Like this, yeah. so, you can, just as there's a complex order book for someone to sell you this combination, actually they're technically buying it from you, but there's a complex order. You could take this complex order, yeah. flip it, and sell it a minute later. Okay. But what I, so I, you don't have to let them expire. That does answer a question, but I think my main question is like keeping on two out of the three options if the market makes a big move. Do you know what I mean? You're saying mid-trade, mid -trade, yeah. doing something with Change. some of the options. You absolutely can do that. I did that today, for example. I had, I actually have on, it's a much longer term trade than this, but I have on a broken wing butterfly right now on our trading desk. Today, I just took the top option, I took twice, the top option and the middle short option, and I closed those. I had a 25 lot on, and I basically sold two each of the top option, the top long option, and the middle, two of those middle short options. That, I entered what they call a credit spread to do that. And uh, I closed that because I had a reason to do that. I had some um, technical options reasons that I felt it would be advantageous of me to do that. So yes, you can, you can do that. You can close portions. There's, the, you own those options. So you can do what you want with them. You don't have to keep it in that complex order formation. You can break it up if you want to. Now, your margin may change. You may put yourself into a much more dangerous position by doing something like that, in which case your broker is going to margin the hell out of you for doing that. But you absolutely can do that as long as you have enough capital in your account. Yes? Is it possible to just like remove the bottom six, 1670 long and then just in the scenario where the market does sell off, uh, cover the short puts at 1689 and also sell the longs? Well, first of all, these are, they're only five point strikes, so you couldn't do that in, this, in the case of this index. But uh, it's kind of in theory. Yeah, sure. You could cover them. You're saying, why buy them if, you're not, if you may not need them? Why buy the bottom one? Why buy the protection one? Here, here's why. First of all, your broker is going to demand a massive amount of capital from you to do that, which should tell you something. It means you're taking a massive amount of risk because what if the market gaps overnight from 1724 to 1650? Now, you're short the 1690s all the way down to 1650. You do have the 1700s helping you, but you only got 10 of those and you've got 20 of the shorts. So you would say, well, go in and cover the 1690s, right? It's a little late for that because they have now blown up. So for you to buy those back, you're gonna essentially lock in this a gigantic loss. So it's like the game's over already. The problem with doing it the way you're suggesting is the, the value of the options that will either literally close to 1690 or 1689 will be massive. And now you got in 150 bucks and you just paid out some thousands and thousands of dollars to buy that 1689 because the market's trading at 1650. I do not know any trader who would do that trade that you just said because of that reason. I didn't know you couldn't cover them overnight. Well, m most options that 
most people trade, stop trading at index options, stop trading at 4.15 p.m. Now, there are ES options, which are the options on the um, E-minis, which are what people quote when they're talking about the futures. Um, but what do you do, stay all up all night? I mean, you know, uh, and you couldn't put, you don't want to put an automatic order in in the market for the middle of the night. Think about what, well, all of you were around on November or whatever it was, 2016, when they had the U.S. election. The futures dropped, I, uh, I don't know, what the, I think the S&P was down over 100 as it was obvious Trump was going to win. By the next day, the market had rallied and then didn't stop rallying for two months, okay? So suppose you had put in an order for an ES option at if the market dropped 50 points below you, a put and you bought that option in the middle of the night because your broker executed your conditional order, right? Next morning, you're not a happy camper because the market rallied. So you ended up buying it in the middle of the night because you were asleep, you didn't understand that the market was bouncing. You, you got a big problem. Um, and so it doesn't really work. Uh, so you gotta buy the protection up front. It's kind of like saying, here's a good example. Why do I have to buy fire insurance? Just as soon as the house starts like, you know, just like the living room's on fire, right? Nothing else. Can I go out and buy fire insurance? All right? No, you can't because they're gonna ask you on your application that you're filling out very quickly. Um, is your building burning right now, okay? And if the answer is yes, they're really not gonna buy you, sell you the insurance. So it's not that bad because you can buy it. Actually, you could buy the insurance on a burning building, but it would probably be 90%, cost 90% of the value of the building, which would kind of not make it worth it. So that is why. It's just think, see, I'm an insurance guy, so I, but it's a really, really good analogy to options. It's an excellent way to think through options. Um, options, what happens to options when a big event's coming up? Do they go up or they go down? What do you think? Up. They go up, why? Volatility increases. Volatility increases and that means what? The brokers want to protect themselves in any scenario. The, the people, well, yes, that's an interesting point, but the people selling it realize something big's about to happen. Yeah. I'm not gonna get run over here, I'm gonna charge. If I'm going to get run over, I'm going to charge for it, okay? So they charge heavily for that. What do you think happens to insurers of homes along the east coast of Florida on the beachfront when a hurricane's coming in from Africa? What do you think happens to the cost of the insurance? Number one, a lot of them stop writing, okay? But the ones who uh, are, do write, um, First, you know, as the, if the hurricane's literally bearing down, they're, they're not gonna write it. But if it's coming off of Africa, they might still write it because you don't know where really it's gonna go. They're gonna charge you a pretty penny for that. And they're not, by the way, just profiteering. There's a real problem if that hits and they know it and they've gotta get paid for it. That, think about that. That, if, if, you, want, if you really get interested in options, Keep these analogies in mind because it's going to explain everything going on in the market. Options are about fear. They're a fear measure, right? The values of them go up because of fear, and they come down because of the release of fear. So right before, that's why if, if, you, um, if you do an earnings play with options, you come in and you do a... Um, you sell the options at the money. Uh, you know, let's go back to Google. Trading 1,200 earnings are coming up and you sell the 1,200 Google call and you sell the 1,200 Google put. You will receive a fortune for doing that. You, the cash you're gonna get is gonna be immense. Why? Because you're taking an immense risk. Because Google can gap 150 points overnight depending on an earnings positive or negative result. So if you've sold the 1200 put and it's down at 1050 now, you are what they call hurt and pop, okay? Uh, on the other hand, suppose Google has a, like a meh earnings release. 
and you got paid 200 bucks for selling both the, call, the at the money call and the at the money put, and the stock just moved like 25, 30 bucks, you just made a lot of money. So these are called earnings plays. They're really dangerous, and they're really, really profitable, depending upon whether the market moves a lot or the market moves a little. So anyway, yeah, I call options three-dimensional chess. Stocks, um, they can go up, they go down, right? But with options, the stock can go up and the option, the call option can go down. And it can happen because it's run out of time. You got the 12, Google goes from 1200 to 1240. You got the 1250 call, unfortunately it's expiring in five minutes. So even though the stock went up and you own the call, you still lost all of it. You lost your entire investment in that option, even though it did exactly pretty much what you thought it would do. So that's why on our desk, we like to sell options instead of buy options because 75% uh, of all options actually expire worthless. But they don't tell you that at the SIBO because they want people to buy options. What is the major takeaway from this example that we've shown you today? Well, we've shown you that there is a way to combine options for a short term index options trade that can provide you with a guaranteed profit in four of the only five scenarios that can happen with a trade as we reviewed. And more excitingly, there's a pretty spectacular outcome that can occur if the market moves down in an orderly way such that the short puts in the strategy expire worthless. So it's exciting to think that you can execute a strategy that while it certainly can lose money in certain circumstances, that's true of any trade, it works out very well in so many different scenarios, as long as you know how to put that trade together correctly in the first place. Just to remind you, as I said earlier, if you enjoyed the video and would like to learn three more real world option strategies that our traders use, including the surprisingly simple and powerful strategy that some of the greatest investors in the world, like Warren Buffett, use all the time, plus an options trading strategy that has a statistical 80% probability of profit month in and month out, plus an option strategy that you can employ with a stock that you like where you'll make your target profit whether the stock goes up, goes nowhere, or even goes down a small percentage, then you should check out the free options class that we're currently running. Just go ahead and click the link that should be appearing now at the top right corner of your screen. That will open up the free registration page in the new window so that you don't lose this video. It's an extremely rare opportunity for retail traders and investors to learn directly from Wall Street traders, but that's exactly what you'll be getting through this free online workshop. So click the link to sign up now and don't miss it. Now, one more thing I'd like you to do is go ahead and click our subscribe button so you don't miss any of our trading videos produced for the trading and investing community. And while you're at it, add your feedback in the comment section for what videos you'd like us to produce next, as well as what you found helpful from this video. So from all of us at SMB, trade well.